grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, who is Jesus Christ. When Pastor Schoener called me this morning, I wasn't sure what the sermon, text sermon was going to be, so I looked it up, and I found there was three parts to this. The first part, Jesus says, I'm going to speak plainly to you. Finally, I get to do a sermon not based upon a parable I don't understand. <laughs> so the second part is prayer and how important prayer life is to us as a congregation and to his disciples. Now, I looked up online. The, the sermon text I'm using is by Reverend James T. Batcher, and he talks mainly about the prayer part. But there's also a third part, and it's about peace. And I will finish with the saying I saw through walking through Gallium. So it's Easter. It's the sixth Sunday of Easter, but we step back to the night before Jesus dies, and he talks about prayer to his disciples. The words we hear today in today's gospel are the last words of Jesus' farewell address to his disciples before his death. Jesus had already warned his disciples about the sufferings, the persecution, the anxiety and sorrow that will befall them in the days, months, and years to come. He told them about the suffering that they would endure for the sake of the gospel. He promised them his comfort and aid, and he promised to send the Holy Spirit to them, help them face the challenges that would soon come their way. Then as he came to the end of his teaching, he encouraged them to pray. And after that, he himself prayed for the church through all the ages. Let us pray. O most gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you, we open our hearts to you, that you fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us all, at all times and places, focus upon you in prayer, word, and deed. Help us to, be, to understand your plan for us and the world that we have also accept your peace and share that peace with the community and the neighbors in our, in our country. Amen. Now, I, we look at this today's gospel reading. He's focusing three times upon that prayer. So he encourages his disciples to, sp to pray to God and to pray for you and help each other. He speaks of our Heavenly Father. He speaks of the love that the Father has for us. He spoke of God, the Father's desire to hear our words and thoughts as we pray to him. Now you think about praying, you can say, well, I can't pray in front of the congregation because I just don't know what to say. But that's not what Jesus is talking about here. He's talking about opening our hearts and our minds to God. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, that power, that Holy Spirit will transform our thoughts and our words so God understands our needs and our desires. And it's difficult to pray because we're not sure exactly how to pray sometimes. We're not sure, even though we have the examples of the Lord's Prayer, of how we should start a prayer. We start with praise. What has God done for us in our lives? I think back to yesterday and the storms that came through this area. There's damages to property here. There's wildfires in Texas in the southwest. There was a snowstorm in the Colorados where they had up to two foot of snow. Now, I'm glad, thankful, and praise to God we didn't have that snow here. But they need that snow for the water content because they are in a drought. The nation's bread basket, which is in California, is undergoing a severe drought. We're being impacted by wars overseas which we have no control over. And all those things we need to pray about. But we have things in our personal lives that we need to give to God's attention, even though we know he knows what's in our heart. Prayer. We pray at least three times during the service. We have a prayer box out there. For you. If you want to know the pastor to have something to pray for, put the note in the prayer box. Tuesday evenings we have prayer meeting here. Prayer is essential into our spiritual life. We need to pray. We need to understand and have that open communication with God. And again, as we hear today's gospel, we have an opportunity to hear what a marvelous thing it is that we are not only have the privilege of seeking to the, speaking to the great sovereign Lord of all things, but Jesus actually instructs us to speak to him as our beloved father. God the Father is the perfect father, even for those who are broken images of their fathers due to death, abuse, or some other tragedy. God the Father is not just a name or title. It is his true nature. He is the perfect father. The one who loves, sacrifices, cherishes, and otherwise cares for us. He is the one who demonstrated his love for us by sending his only begotten son into the world that whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. 
His love for us is perfect, and he wants to hear from us on a regular basis. <laughs> During the course of the, the prayers of the church, I say, we now open to our heart, open our hearts and give up and pray in your name, your Father, that you understand and hear all those you are blessed with your healing presence. What does that mean? We uplift you and name in our hearts all those you hear blessed with your healing presence. What is that healing presence? Most often we think it is about our bodily needs, our bodily illnesses, but so much more. It's about spiritual healing. It's about the healing between in, in, in families, in our congregation, in this country that is it's strife, political strife, that we need healing. Prayer. The earth seems large to us, but to him it isn't even a dust speck. He is so big and powerful in comparison, we are infinitely small and weak. How could such a big, great being know we are here? How is it that Jesus instructed us sinners to dress this holy and mighty God as Father? How can this be? Jesus includes the answer to this question in his instructions to pray. Three times he includes the instruction to ask in his name. When Jesus instructs us to pray in his name, we remember whose name this is. This is the name of the Son of God who took on human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. <clears throat> this is the name of the one who was born under the strictest law and kept that law in perfection without sin. This is the name of one who submitted to unfair arrest and trial, to shameful torture, and ultimately to death on a cross. This is the name of the one who suffered all these things and then rose from the grave. <clears throat> this is the name of the one who ascended into heaven in order to fill all things. This is the name of the one who rescued us from sin, death, and the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. This is the name of the one who promised to return in order to raise the bodies of all the dead and take me and all believers to live with him in eternity forever. Jesus said that we are to pray in his name. Praying in Jesus' name is the foundation of prayer. It anchors prayer and the salvation that Jesus earned for us with his suffering and death. It anchors our prayer in Christ's resurrection and the promise that we shall also arise from the dead. Since the power of prayer resides in Jesus' name, it does not rest in the prayer itself, nor does it rest in us. We need not worry about making our prayers eloquent or long. We need not be concerned about the exact form of our prayer we need not worry about being worthy to pray, for the worthiness of our prayer resides in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, or something similar, similar is not the, necessarily the way to open a prayer. It simply means that there is trust in Jesus Christ. Thus prayer is a gift that the Holy Spirit gives to us at the same time that he works having saving faith in us. If we have faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation, then we also have the faith that prays in Jesus' name. To pray in Jesus' name means that God hears our prayers for the sake of Christ, our only mediator and high priest before God. Therefore, our prayer must be centered in him alone. For me. On the other hand, those who trust in Jesus have no need to be eloquent. We don't have to worry that we will get the words exactly right. Because God the Father listens, loves to listen to those who trust in Jesus, our sins have been removed, and Jesus Christ has covered us in his righteousness. Our thoughts, words, and feelings are precious to God, no matter how crude they are. In the same way, the Spirit that also helps our weaknesses, we, for we don't have, know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which, we can't, be, which can't be uttered. The Holy Spirit knows what is on our mind, and we will convert our prayers into a perfect heavenly language that our little words cannot even express. <coughs> even our crudest language that our little words cannot even express, even our crudest prayers will be translated into the beautiful language of the Holy Spirit as they make their way to our dear Father in heaven. From the simplicity of the youngest child to the confusion of the Alzheimer's patient in the nursing home, the Holy Spirit will make them all into heavenly masterpieces. The wonderful thing about prayer is that it lasts forever. I'll leave you with this thought. As I walk through Guyon, there's a church uptown 
that has a bulletin board. And on a few Sundays ago, it had this message on it. Today, I will look for an opportunity to speak God's peace to someone. In the final part of the gospel lesson, Jesus promises peace. Do you share the peace of the Lord with people around you, in our congregation, in our neighborhoods, during jobs? Do you share prayer with them? That's the struggle we face. I have many opportunities during my walk to interact with people, and I usually don't say, peace the Lord be with you. That's my fault. That's my shortcoming. But that's what we are called to do. Pray. Let the power of the Holy Spirit fill you up and share the peace. Amen.